Hi there, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, greeting cards. These also can be used in journals. Um, when I make greeting cards, I make them with just a blank, they're blank inside. A lot of times the sentiment is on the front. Like this particular one says, Life doesn't come with a manual, it comes with the mother. As a little cat, this is mostly all, well, actually it is all fabric. The background piece is a piece of fabric. This is a lace heart. A cat. And then, of course, lace across the top. Um, the way I make my cards is I, I glue everything down. And then I bring them to the sewing machine. And, of course, open the card out. And then I use a free motion stitch to, to uh, stitch around the whole card. Sometimes if I have more heavy items here in the middle part, I just stitch around the outside of the card. That I've done also. But it's always with a free motion stitch. Um, I'm not going to show you the free motion stitch today because um, most people, you know, unless you're a quilter, know how to do that. So we'll just go with the... Um, the card and then if you wish to make yours you can sew around it any way you want or you can just have it um, just glued so here's a few more cards that I have this one says she was a modern girl with a vintage soul and like I said these cards they can be used as a greeting card they fit right into a 5x7 frame if you use a 5x7 card when you're making them. And you can also use them in a journal. You could use them for a tuck spot or if you wanted to um, to cut, cut it in half along here you can use it for a, a journaling tag. Of course some of mine you can see the stitching on the back. But, and if you wanted to do that you could do that also. Here's another one. Nothing feels as good at the end of a long day than dog slobber. Of course, that's true. You come home and they're always there to greet you, aren't they? And cats, too. This one says, Asking a quilter to mend is like asking Picasso to paint your garage. Has a fabric, or excuse me, actually this is a, a fabric that I did, um, and then I took a photograph of it, and this is the photograph of of, of another um, card that I made, and it has ribbon and it has a little sewing machine up here. These four cards that I just showed you are on my Etsy shop, along with other cards. So if you'd like to uh, purchase them or to see some more of my cards, go to my Etsy shop. And that is located, the, you can click on the button or the uh, my Etsy shop in the, in the top banner of my videos. Okay, so let's get started and we'll make a few. Um, there's also some other cards on my channel. Uh, that I didn't show you. Let's get started and we'll make some uh, cards today. What I'd like to show you first of all is um, in the last video we made a snippet roll. So I thought we would use part of one of these snippet rolls to make, to put on a card. Um, here's the one we made, we made the last time. And I, it has been sewn. I did sew it. And I also added some more items to it. So I'll show you the, the whole thing. Bring it up a little closer. I added some more lace at the end. I think that kind of finished it off a bit. Now, if I wanted to use this in a journal or a card, what I could do is 
and so I can put it, audition it on the card, whatever size card you're using. As I mentioned before, I'm using 5 by 7 cards. And you can audition it here and see where you want to see where you want to cut it. Um, I do think I'm going to cut this approximately here. Because I don't want to cut off that 1845. Okay. And then after I cut that off, I'll show you what what, we'll get, what we can do. Now this one I probably will not let me get my now let me use these scissors because there's paper in there too. I don't want to wreck my scissors. No, I am going to need my other scissors. I did cut off a little part of that burlap, but I still have that, that left. I love, love, love making these. Okay, so I could use that on a card. Let's cut one off of, we'll cut one off of the other snippet roll that I made. Okay, this one I'm actually going to use on, on the card to show, to show you. Okay, kind of audition it on here. I think it looks good on this this background paper, which is craft paper. So, I think I'm going to cut it right where this, this flower intersects. I'm going to pick it up so that I can maneuver it better. Okay, I like that. And I have the rest of these snippets to use for cards, or I can use them in journals as pockets. Okay, I think this has kind of a, enough on it, so I'm not going to add anything else underneath it. I am going to put a sentiment on it, which is, life doesn't come with a manual, it comes with a mother, which was on that other card also. But since it's close to Mother's Day, I thought I'd put a few more uh, mother's cards on the on my Etsy shop. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to use my fabric type glue since this has quite a bit of um, fabric in it, and of course lace. I mark with my pencil. this to go. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. That's just so that after I got the, have the glue on it, then I'll know where to put it. Okay. I'm going to put the glue on the back of this. I'm going to try not to put it on the places where the lace doesn't have anything on the back part of it. So that it doesn't um, it doesn't show through, and it's okay to leave it it loose like that. Okay, since it doesn't go through here or here, I can go ahead and put a little glue there. down. Oops, sorry about that. I hit the camera. I'm still getting used to this making of videos. Okay, I'm going to get a, a wet wipe. And 
what that enables me to do is to press down so that the glue adheres at the same time picking up any that might come out on the, on the edges. I like the way this says, the sweetest thing when talking about your mother. My mother was the sweetest thing. She really was. And her name was Sally. This is not a sweet name. She's gone now, but she would have been in her 90s now. this apart. There we go. My scissors. I'll cut this off. I hope you're all doing okay. Staying in. I went to the grocery store this morning. That was quite a quite an ordeal. I made it back okay. I got everything I needed pretty much. Here they have a, um, I'm, we live in Colorado, they have a, a time where seniors 60 plus can go to the grocery store. Which is nice. I guess that's that's nice since we're the the biggest um, demographic for getting the, the virus. Make sure I can still see it underneath there. And I can. I put a little ink on the sentiment, the words. And that is, so that's not quite so white. It doesn't stand out quite so white. Okay. I think I'm going to call that finished. This is the first time actually that I've used those snippets to make a card. It is, It, it does go really fast because everything's already layered up. I've been making my collage cards for about, I'd say, 10 years now. And i got to tell you, they're my bread and butter. They're very popular. Um, I do not like take a picture of it and and just sell that print. Every card that I make is actually the original, so I think that that's one of the reasons why why people like them so much because they're getting an original little piece of art. Okay, let's see what we have for time. Okay, we have time to make a couple more. Uh, this one I made earlier. And I used an old book page. This book was from, I think, the 40s or the 50s. And it was a children's book, and it had been written in crayon throughout, so I didn't, I didn't mind too much taking the pages out. Um, but it has some really wonderful in illustrations about the bunny, that the book was written about a bunny. And so I used also some of the text. Uh, this underneath part is a piece of fabric. And a um, piece of uh, scrapbook paper. And it says, I hope you dance. Okay, 
so I, I decided I wanted to put a ribbon on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm put it inside the card. I bring it around to where I want the bow to be. And I can have it in the middle if that's where I want it, or over to the side. I decided to have it over on this side. What I'm going to do, <clears throat> put this on here for just a second while I look for the charm that I had to go on there. If I can't find it, I'll, maybe I'll grab another one. Here it is. No, that's not it. Oh, that is kind of a cute one. I think I'll use that one. Okay, so I want the charm on it. I need to put that on before I tie the bow or before I tie the knot. And you'll notice that I cut the ribbon at an angle so that I could put this little pointy edge into the hole. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, I bring that up to where the ribbon's going to be. I maneuver it to where I want it. And then I can tie my knot. Now, sometimes I just leave it like this and cut off, cut off the ribbons here, and sometimes I make a bow. I'm not quite sure what I, what I want to do with this, so I'm going to make a bow and see how I like it. Excuse me, I had to clear my throat. Um, I'm going to put two videos together here, so if I do run out of time, then I'll, I'll later on I'll, I'll spice the two together. So if it seems like an abrupt cutoff, it'll just start back up again. Okay, kind of like that with the bow, and I'm going to. At an angle. Okay, and sometimes um, it, it gets kind of heavy, and the the charms and so on kind of um, start to weigh it down. So what I do on that is a lot of times I'll glue the the charms with a little bit of glue to the, to the card. Especially if they're a heavier, heavier charm, which this one is. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes I also will glue the bow to the top, but I don't think I need to on this, on this one. Okay. There's that card completed. Now I would sew it because that's what I do with my cards. It's kind of my trademark. But I think it looks perfectly nice like this, too. Okay, let's try one more. This next one... A long time ago, I made this template of a, of a seahorse. I just... I just uh, looked at pictures of seahorses and so on, and I got the general shape that I wanted. And so I worked on a drawing, and then I um, I did the drawing, then I cut it out, and I used this as my pattern or my template. Um, sometimes you can find these for free on, on the internet. If you look, you know, just, just look for um, template or pattern for... And I would look for free pattern because 
uh, you don't want to take anybody else's artwork and if it's not free um, you don't want you can't use it on a card that you're gonna sell but you could use it you know if you if you aren't gonna sell it you could use it Then what I did was I put it on a sheet of newsprint. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I drew around it, traced around it, and then I cut it out. And it is a little bit time consuming to do that. Okay, what I want to do is I want to ink it a little bit. And my first thought was to ink it with the brown. But then I got to thinking, no, why don't I use the blue? Because I've got blue ink. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my, my little, I think it's a makeup brush. And I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. Just give it a little color on the edges. I suppose I could give it a little blue eye. Do this as much or as little as you want. You can use the brown, the brown ink also, or any color. I'll bring the color in a little more. Okay. Then what I like to do is I got I had a couple of different fabrics to choose from as for as far as what the background was going to be, and I decided on this one. Uh, it doesn't really look like the seashore, but I just liked it because it was a cool pattern and it was blue. So I decided on that. So that's what I'm going to do. And my favorite saying to put on these ones that are kind of the beachy ones is uh, the beach is my happy place and I need to print some more of those up so I, I'm not going to put it on there today but I will put it on there later I'm using my white glue on this you could you could use your uh, fabric glue on there also your fabric tack glue sorry about my hand okay. and notice I'm Kind of offsetting this fabric to the side of it. Even turn it this way to make sure I get it on there like I want it. Just trying to get it kind of equidistant from the top and the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to put little guy on. And the glue around the edges. I've mentioned this before but the, the thing that I like about this glue is that it does not um, Okay, and there was a little pause there in the in the filming. I was saying that this that this particular glue does not leave a lot of wrinkles, like some glues do. Okay, I like that. So let's. Um, I picked out a little charm to put on this card, and it is a little starfish with a pearl. And I'm going to put the saying, the beach is my happy place. I don't have one right now, so I'm going to skip that for the moment. Get my ribbon ring out. This 
time I want the, the tie at the top of the card. <clears throat> and this time I won't do a, um, I won't do a bow. I'm just going to, I don't have enough ribbon really to do a bow. So I'm just going to do a, um, and it makes a difference too, which way you put in the, uh, the ribbon as far as if it's going to be in the front or the back. So just go ahead and try it. And then if it doesn't work, you might have to take it off and go the, go in the other direction. We'll see here. If you have a helper, that would be nice. It's like tying a, tying a package up. Sometimes if you have a, a helper, that really that's really good. There is that little... Nope. See, I put it on the wrong way. I have to try to get it on the right way this time. Okay, there. Let me make sure that's... Okay. Let me make sure that, that that's um, where I want it or semi where I want it. When you tie it, it, it might uh, move around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Okay, sorry I'm so silent here. I'm just concentrating on getting this this right. Okay. So I think I got that in the right direction. Yes, I do. And I think I might need a dab of glue to hold that in place. So uh, once again, I'm going to use my fabric tack glue. If you do want to try sewing these cards or quilting them, as I as I say, then um, what you'll need to do is uh, just like normal free motion quilting, where you drop the feed dogs and then sew it, and then of course just sew through the one, open the card out, and then sew through the one layer. Okay, I'll put this. You might need to hold that down for a minute until it, until it sticks. I know when I was teaching and, and we used tacky glue with the children because it's a, it's a good white glue to use that, that hold, holds fairly quick. But I always told them, well, count to ten. You know, hold on to it and count to ten. And, of course, they would go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And think that that was going to work. Okay. So, kind of done the wind finished. Now, when I put the, the beach is my happy place, I'm not sure yet where I, where I might put it. I can put it really anywhere on this card. Maybe over here. Possibly down here. I'll just have to see. And it's okay to leave these, these strings hanging and, and, uh, I, I like the way it, it's kind of um, ravelly on the edges. Or you, can, if you have one that's a little bit too long, then you can cut it down if you want. Okay, so we got one more card done. Let's see. Let's try another one. Here's a. Okay, here's one that has a lot of layering, so I'll show you that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my, I kind of have in mind, you know, my design that I want so that I know it. But uh, if you don't, you can always take a picture of it with your camera and then 
as you go back and glue everything down, then you can look at your, your photograph and see how you had it positioned. This is a piece of, um, of napkin, and this is a piece of a tea bag. So, actually, what, what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to stamp a little bit on here. Stays on ink, and I'm going to use my my script stamp. My script stamp is so old. Actually, it used to be two pieces, and I cut it down because it was a, almost a little bit too big to maneuver with the stamp pad. <clears throat> Since this is uh, going to be the Eiffel Tower. It's going to have a kind of a French theme to it. I'm going to use this French script stamp. Now I can stamp on the papers. I can stamp around the sides of the card, which is sometimes fun to do. You don't know if it'll show or not until you get until you get finished. In this case, the tea bag may show through on some of this bottom part, so I'll stamp that too. And I can also stamp this paper. You can also stamp when you're finished. You can use basically any technique on these cards that you use um, on journaling or on mixed media collage. Okay, let's call that finished for now. Okay, what I'm going to do, since this paper is very, very thin, I am going to use a glue stick to glue this, to glue this down. Okay. I'm actually going to glue this right on the right on the paper you could also use a um, a Mod Podge on this if you want um, if you do use a Mod Podge use just a really really thin coat because sometimes it um, will wrinkle up too much on on the on the paper. Okay, and I will put this over the top. Take my wet wipe and uh, lay a little bit of that glue. That that purple glue, of course, will dry clear. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Next thing I'm going to put on is this um, Eiffel Tower. I fussy cut this out of a piece of fabric, so hopefully it's going to go on there. Uh, oh, wait a minute! I had this. I had this. Uh, this little guy first. So I'm gonna use uh, my white glue for that. Sorry. Put my cap back on and it got kind of clogged. So I just need to go back in with my little stick pin. Just a little bit. Okay, 
Now, if I just wanted half of this doily on, that, that would be okay, too. I could do that and try to get it all on there. Could ink around this little uh, piece of uh, music note paper, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just um, uh, leave it as is. down because it goes back behind the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I didn't pay any attention to where my pencil mark was. That's okay though. I can, I can erase it. Sometimes it's easier on a piece that's this long and narrow to glue like one half of it down and then put it down onto the page and then glue the other half of it down. So I'm going to try that technique here. You can also use a fabric tack on this, on this since it is fabric. So what will happen is this will probably flop down and if it had glue up on the top I wouldn't be able to maneuver it as easily without getting glue all over the place. So I need to move it over a little bit because I, I want, kind of wanted it to go up the middle of the heart. Let's try that. I'm going to have to trim off a bit of it, but that's okay. okay. Tell you what, these days I sure am glad I, I do this. Uh, do crafting and art because it's nice just to be able to go into your room or your studio and just pretend like the outside world does not exist right now. Still think about it, but you get a little bit of relief. So if you haven't done any crafts up till now, give it a give it a try. It's a very uh, good stress uh, reliever, as is really any hobby. Okay, you're a rainbow sprinkle in a vanilla world. Okay, let's do that. Let's uh, ink those up a bit. With the brown ink. Just use it rub just a little bit on there. You don't you don't want to put too much on there because you don't want to cover over your, your words. But sometimes that stark white doesn't look real real good. Every once in a while a card will look okay with the stark white on it.
Okay, then you can kind of audition where you might want your words to be. And you don't have to put them on real super straight. I like to put them at an angle. It also helps putting them at an angle because that way you don't have to make sure that they're exactly straight. And it looks better anyway, right? Just a little bit of bling onto the Eiffel Tower. What do you think? Okay, so a few more nuts here. This has a sticky back, that's what I was, what I was doing. But I'm also going to put some glue on just to make sure. Take your wet wipe, and I think I'm going to need one more right here. that you'll go on over to my Etsy shop and, and uh, look at some of the cards over there. Maybe get some more ideas. Um, once you get started, it's very addicting. Uh -uh. If you don't, if you can't figure out what to do at all, your best bet is to take a piece of scrapbook paper and either, okay, that one's finished. And either or a piece of fabric and just cut cut it out to be a little bit less than the card glue that down and then just start building up this one will have a have a dog on it and then pick a sentiment or whatever you want maybe pick a ribbon to go around the top there you go you've got your You've got your uh, card. Let's try this silver ribbon on this one. And we'll show you what, what we made today. Thank you for joining me. This is Chris. Peace of mind. Art and crafts. Today we made cards. And you can use these as greeting cards or framed or you can also 
use them in your journals as uh, journaling cards. So I wish you all peace of mind. Take care. Bye for now.